We weren't rolling before. Wow, you missed the whole like cringy. I don't, I didn't like the other one. It was like, I didn't, I didn't, you're so close to me. It's making me really nervous. What's happening guys? Oh, no. <laughs> wait, wait, what? What's happening guys? It's your boy Nick Che. Today I'm here with my good friend Adriel Lee. You've seen her in a few of my vlogs and today is a little bit exciting. We're doing our very first mukbang. Um, today we have Buffalo Wild Wings and we're gonna be answering not some- Not sponsored. Not sponsored, I wish it was sponsored. <laughs> but today we're gonna be answering some questions for a freshman year college Q&A. And yeah, let's get it. I'm hungry, first let's eat. Okay, all right, you're really close to me. Did I mention that? It's- Mmm. You gotta do the... <laughs> focusing, it's auto focus. Okay, yeah. Yummy. Before this video begins, Adriel is, <laughs> is a, gonna be, she's in my year, so she's gonna be a sophomore at NYU studying fashion merchandising. Wrong. You are so wrong. She goes at NYU, so follow her you on You don't Instagram. even know what my major is? What is it? Global Liberal Studies. All right, first question from Tyler. When did you start college applications? I started mine in August, September. I always recommend starting early just so you have a lot more time to figure that out. Is it okay to be stylish slash fashionable if you're living on campus? Does it matter? <laughs> yes, 100% of course it's okay. Does it matter? In my opinion, I think it does. Like I'm always dressed yeah. up for class. Like you always want to be looking on fleek. I like never wear a t-shirt out. Yeah, dude, if you wear sweatpants and t-shirts and slides to class, like you're doing something wrong. What is something you wish you would have known before you arrived on campus? During like the first week, like you have, like make sure you make a lot of friends, make sure like you just make the most connections as you can because that's when you're gonna meet like the most people. Yeah, I think going off that, like the very first week that you get on campus, it's gonna be a little overwhelming. There's gonna be so many people, people you've never seen before. And you know, it's hard to like try and find your group of friends, especially within that first few months. But I think the best advice is to just go out there and like be, proactive in making your friends and be um, outgoing and join clubs join clubs but don't feel pressured to join like too much because like in you don't high wanna, school like yeah. nick and i were pretty involved but like you don't have to have like that whole mindset of i have to be just as involved in high school and especially in college like the clubs just take up a lot more time so only invest your time into things that you're really passionate about <laughs> do i get to beat up nerds if i get into an ivy league school i hearted that one like absolutely yeah. What are the negative things about being a freshman? You just ignored me. What are the negative things about being a freshman? Nothing. No, I think there's a fair amount of- I think freshman year is like the best year. You literally get- you get a pass for everything. Okay, you do get a pass. Like, you you can act like you're that naive freshman who doesn't really know anything. But on the other side, seniors and upperclassmen will look down on you if you're being that annoying, obnoxious freshman. So don't be that kid. How is it to live in a college dorm? What is positive, what is negative? One big pro is that like you're obviously independent. You don't have parents to be looking out for you, but that does kind of count as a con because you don't have someone to cook for you and do your laundry and chores and whatnot. No, you disagree? Yeah, it's like so much freedom. Like I wanna go back right now. I'm ready to be back. But some people don't know how to do their own laundry or cook or yeah. anything, do anything for themselves. <clears throat> yeah, what, a fucking, what a loser. No tea, no shade, but. Tips for college applications, what to say, what to put down, what to not to do. Also the advantages of choosing different deadlines early or regular. I don't think there's like an end all be all perfect college application. I mean, mine was pretty close. <laughs> I think the biggest thing is like, just be yourself. What are you doing, bro? Very chill. Don't try and be someone you're not and try and use like bigger words or put stuff on your resume that doesn't really accurately reflect who you are. Wait, did you do ED for Princeton? I did ED for Harvard. I got deferred and I got rejected. But I think the advantage is if your application early on is really stellar, it's on point, like you have it figured out really early, then I mean like go ahead and submit it to your top school because it, they're, statistically speaking, it is a higher chance to get accepted if you do early. I think if you have a dream school, then definitely yeah. do ED because NYU was my dream school. That was the only school I wanted to go into and I did ED and I she got accepted. in. So, I was there when she got in. Yeah, I'll play was... the video right now. Wait, 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 yeah, wait, wait. I think wait, that means wait, you got, no, I think, no, no, I, yeah. No, 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 stop, 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 wait, wait, wait. Accept the, ah! <laughs> <laughs> No, that's <laughs> embarrassing. I don't know, I, I advocate for, advocate? Ad advocate. I'm an advocate. You're an advocate, but you advocate. For ED. Oh, this one's a good question. It was, how hard was it for you to stay in touch with all of your high school friends that went to different schools? So, like I said, she goes to NYU, I go to Princeton. 
meaning that it's only an hour and a half away from each other. I mean, since we are really good friends, um, she came down for one of my formals. I went up for her birthday. I'm in New York a lot. So, I mean, we see each other a fair amount of times. Regarding like other friends, like if you're not close, like for me, it wasn't hard at all because I mean, you have a phone, like all you have to do is like, <laughs> send a text. Like there's not, it's there, not hard. Yeah, there's no excuse for you to not keep up with your friends. Like if, what I would do is like, I would go on like Google Hangouts with my boys back home. We would do that like once a month and once every few weeks just to catch up. Cause like, especially in college, like everyone's yeah. schedule is so busy that you don't have time to always be texting or Snapchatting every single day. But like, if you want that friend and that friend really wants you, then like, it's definitely It's a reciprocal yeah. relationship. What are your ways of managing time and having a productive day during freshman year? I have a planner. Oh, and <laughs> Adriel is literally the best person I know about planning her schedule. She has a planner literally every single day, like hour by hour, it is planned out with lunches, dinners, meetings, homework. Yeah. Like she sticks to it to a T. Like if you text her to hang out, like she's like, nope, I'm already busy that day. It took us like two weeks to plan this. No, it didn't. <laughs> Don't lie. I definitely recommend you get a planner. It's a lifesaver. Um, mm. For me, it's more so just like having a consistent schedule every single day of like waking up at a certain time, going to the gym, getting breakfast, going to your classes, and then dedicating like a few hours to do your homework, to study, et cetera, et cetera. And then once you like get into a routine and a constant schedule, you find that like it just gets easier and easier. And you find that like when you miss a day of the gym or miss going to eat at a certain time, then your schedule is just kind of out of whack. But at the same time, like be flexible, know that like your college schedule is gonna fluctuate a lot. So don't like be dependent on one thing every single day. Be dependent on your college classes schedule. That's the only thing that's ever gonna stay in place. And everything else is like, interchangeable basically in terms of clothing how much should i pack for the first semester let me tell you right off the bat that you will not wear half, half of what you bring exactly like bring half of what you think you're going to need and leave everything else at home because i guarantee that first you're going to get a lot of t-shirts second you're just going to be rotating the same few items that you wear every single day and third like not having clothes at home to wear when you're on home for breaks sucks like that's the worst thing this kind of applies to both of us because she's just now starting out of her youtube channel i will link it down below Ooh. make sure you guys go subscribe she hasn't posted anything yet but hopefully this will force her to make more videos but what motivated you to make your youtube videos and how did you grow your youtube channel um what motivated me was that i found that there was a big lack of princeton youtubers or ivy league youtubers in general and i found that like since I was accepted, I have a very like unique position and a lot of advice for those who are in that same position and wanting to get into these really selective schools. And how it grew so fast was that just consistency and finding ways to post out content. And I think for me specifically is that I don't just do college or Princeton vlogging. I do, you know, fashion and photography and videography. So that, I have a lot of like different subtopics which are good to expand on. Why do you want to start a YouTube channel? Just for the hell of it. Why I not? think it'd be fun like <laughs> I think the biggest thing like to start a YouTube channel is to just do it like don't stop asking questions about how to start or what you need to get started is just do advice on finding your people and making real friends in a big college campus I think she can speak better on that because NYU is a mm -hmm. lot bigger I think we kind of had the same story like this goes back to high school like we never had like a like solid group of friends we were like the floaters so like we were friends with a lot of people from different groups I think college was the same. Like, I don't have like a like solid group of friends. I just like like meeting people from like everywhere. But if you do that and like you're genuine and people like you, then it should be fine. Like, it's not. It shouldn't be hard finding real friends. And the biggest thing is like put yourself out there and don't be afraid to step out of your comfort zone and just make the initiative to talk to someone. I think that's the mm. biggest thing. Is like if you don't put your foot forward and be like, hey, I'm Nick. Nice to meet you. Especially that, those first few months when everyone's trying to make friends. Yeah. Like. Be that person that goes out of their way because... Because you can't expect other people to do the same if you're not willing to do that yourself, you know? How do you manage stress and get over anxiety? Me, personally, I'm actually never one to really get stressed. Like, I do pretty well with managing my time and, yeah, like, how often am I actually stressed? Or get anxiety or, like, have, you like... You don't. That, whoa. I never thought of that. With all the things that I have going on, like, you would think that I'd be someone who's stressed out all the time, but... I don't know, I just, I just don't find things that, that important in life. Like, there's nothing really to stress over. Like, obviously, grades are important and, like, making time for your friends and academics and YouTube. Like, obviously, those are all important, but I'm at the point where, like, I've figured out how to balance it, how to work hard and, like, get through it. Like, I know that at the end of the day, I'll be fine. So, I mean, I, that's not a lot of help, but sh you get stressed. I get stressed so easily. 
You get stressed over the little things. And I think that's the problem is that like you can't- No, I don't get stressed over the little things. It's because I try to please everyone like all the time. And then it's like, it takes a toll on me, but that's another story. <laughs> it sounds like a personal issue. Stop talking in your life. It's freshman year as bad as people make it to be. When I went into college, I thought, oh my God, like um, midterm season, final season, um, like whatever, it's gonna be so hard. Like it's gonna be just the most stressful time of my life. Actually, it really wasn't like, if you know what you know and you're confident in that, then it should be fine. I think of all the years, freshman year is going to be the hardest because you have to figure out how to acclimate to college environment. Yeah. It's an entirely new ballpark from high school. Mm -hmm. but like once you get over that roadblock, like I think the first like three months of, of college were the hardest. But after that, you like get settled in. And now like going back for sophomore year, I'm like ready, I'm pumped, I'm excited. I think college is honestly easier than high school, in my opinion. How so? Like, okay, the so, workload is not easier. The work itself is not easier. The yeah, content is not easier. It's not, none of, nothing is ever, um, what's it called, busy work. You don't like, your professors are actually like so cool. Well, most of them. You're more of like friends with your professors rather than like. <clears throat> you're like colleagues and like they're your mentors yeah. and you look up to them mm -hmm. as professors, not just as teachers. Who and are they're not out to you. like get you yeah. or like try to like, I don't know. It's just a different dynamic. How should a freshman efficiently and effective, effectively figure out their career path um, slash what major they want to go in. And the hardest thing when it comes to like finding a major is like finding what you're passionate about. And especially at a young age, like when we're 18 and 19, like it is hard to think about what we want to be doing as a career when we're in our mid twenties. So if you have something you're passionate about, whether it's music or art or fashion or business or whatever, like obviously pursue that. But if you're like someone like me, who doesn't really know? Like I, I'm like I said, I'm doing I'm doing economics, but you guys know my passion is photography and film. But I think the more practical route for me to take is to get the economics degree, have it in my back pocket as a safety, and then pursue whatever creative endeavors I want. And if it doesn't work, I still have an economics degree to fall back on. Yeah, I think it's like key to always be practical, or like even have a backup plan. Because what if that doesn't work out? Then you have to be able to get back on your feet with something, and then just start over. It is a little scary thinking about like pursuing a major and then finding out maybe that's not right for you. So I mean, take a lot of time. Ask your friends, ask your parents like mm. what what they think you should thing. be doing. You should definitely have a good relationship with your academic advisor. That's like Facts. that's yeah. the that, most that important priceless. thing. Like if she sees a internship, then she's going to take that and give it to you and say, "Hey, are you interested?" Or if you have like a schedule problem, like she'll be more than happy to help you if you She's basically like, she's gonna be like your best friend in high school or in college. Cause like you're gonna go to her with all the problems that you have. Like, I don't know when to graduate, blah, 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 like all that stuff. And that, I think that same thing applies for high schoolers. Like get in touch with your high school counselors mm -hmm. and you know, make sure you're close with them because they're writing yeah. letters of recommendation for you and they're super important for you to yeah. get into your college. If you would sum up your freshman year in one sentence, what would it be? A growing experience, mm -hmm. a learning experience. That's a, yeah, that's what I was gonna say. It's yeah. so fun and you learn so much. It's honestly, I think freshman year was probably the best year of my life. I think you mature a lot. I think you figure your own shit out and like have, and realize that like there's no one else to be accountable for your actions. So you have to be responsible for everything, whether it's your classes or going to eat healthy or working out. Like all that responsibility lies on you, which may is probably not have ever been the case for any of you guys before. Especially with her living in New York, like she's living in the real world every single day. She takes the metro. She like goes out on the weekends, like in the city. So it's very liberating. It's, yeah, it's liberating. It's like, it can only get better from here. It's not gonna get worse. This is the start of a big journey. Are you sure you don't want? Yeah, bro, I'm full, that was a lot. Bro, I'm gonna finish this. Okay, I don't doubt it. But <coughs> that wraps it up for this video. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you enjoyed this mukbang Q&A, Leave a like down below, comment any more videos you guys want to see. I will have her Instagram and hopefully her YouTube channel linked down below. So give her a follow. She is super cool. Kind of. <laughs> Ew, what was that? Alright, that's <laughs> it for this. <laughs> you didn't even say anything. Peace out, guys.